Hey, this year's Oscars have been handed out, but if you want to keep the glow of the silver screen alive, there's one perfect place to visit the Hastings Library. Yeah, believe it or not, that's where you'll see an incredible collection of memorabilia from some of the biggest names and biggest films, and it's all thanks to one man, Terry Dennison, who has put some of his most prized pieces on display for everyone to enjoy. Take a look. What really started all of this was the, the costumes that I got from MGM. Mm -hmm. And they had that big auction back in 1970, long time ago. And a friend went to the auction for me. And that sort of started the whole costume thing. And then I began to just get other little things that I liked. And pretty soon, I'm in all these auctions by telephone. I don't have a computer, so I can't do it online. And the telephone's really fun, because you can hear what's going on. And uh, you can't see it, but you can at least hear what's going on. And I've got some really good deals. This is the Morticia doll from the Adams Family. Uh, the Carolyn Jones, of course, played Morticia. And a fan made this for her. And the, she got this in 1965, and she absolutely loved it. And when she was ill and knew she wasn't going to survive, she gave it to her uh, agent and friend, Marvin Page. And then Marvin, uh, after he passed away, there was an estate sale, and a man named Stephen Cox bought it at the estate sale. And then he eventually put it into an auction sale, and I got it. And this was the letter from Stephen Cox that tells about that. So uh, Carolyn uh, died in 1983. But during the time she was alive, she had it in this case, it came in this case, and she just loved this. Her favor very favorite item from the Adams Family. This is the Lollipop Kid from The Wizard of Oz, and they did a series of the different munchkins and the stars of the movie, too. Uh, this was signed by Jerry Marin, who was the last member of the munchkins to be alive and um, he autographed this at one of the uh, festivals for the Wizard of Oz Festival in Indiana. And in the name of the lollipop kid, we wish to welcome you to Munchkin Land. This is an award that was given to George Burns and Gracie Allen, and it was um, from the TV Academy, and it's a very rare award because they don't give that out too often. And uh, it's supposed to represent a t television, he really liked that. Of all the awards he ever got, uh, he really liked that very, very much and had it on his desk at his home until he passed away. All right, this is the Bob Mackey Award that he got in the 60s. This is from Designs for the Carol Burnett Show. But he did Cher and, and Mitzi Gaynor and so many people. And he recently had an auction too, I think, where most of his sketches, famous sketches. This is a dress that he designed for Mitzi Gaynor for a television show. And um, Mitzi uh, did sh television shows, what, 60s, 70s? And it, his label's in here. And a big, great big label, this is Bob Mackey. But what you don't see is what's underneath here, which, because it's just really something. It's yards and yards and yards. It's just, it just, can you imagine twirling around in this, how she must have looked? This was worn by Barbara Whiting. This is one of my favorite pieces. Debbie Reynolds bought this at the 1970 auction, and she had it for all these many, many years. Then when she began to sell out all of her costume, this was there in the catalog, I think it was the second auction, and it's, it's made of wool, and it's really, really neat, and the movie, again, is Centennial Summer. Uh, it was supposed to be sort of like uh, MGM's uh, Meet Me in St. Louis, take off on that. Barbara Whiting was 15 years old when she made the film Centennial Summer, and she um, played Jean Crane's uh, and Linda Darnell's sister. Well, this costume was worn by Jane Powell in a movie called Two Weeks with Love, which is a delightful film, which you've got to see. Um, she actually filmed the scene called Oceana Roll, where she sang the song, and Debbie Reynolds was in the song with her and they had their birthday was that day that they actually filmed that number. Jane was 21 and Debbie was like maybe 17 or 18. And this dress was worn by um, quite a bit in that film, actually. My mother even wore this to work a few times. But what you also have to see on this dress is the back because look at the number of buttons. So naturally, it, being a movie star, you didn't have to button your, the back of your dress. The, your dress did that for you. And Judy Garland's dress from Easter Parade 
was uh, designed by Irene, whose last name was Gibbons, but she just went by Irene. And uh, this is my most famous costume. And um, I'll, let me, I'll give you a little secret here. This is what the original collar looked like, the color of it. And a lady friend of mine who was a seamstress in Niles where I taught school, she went and put new covers on top of the collar and also the cuffs. And she dipped them, this is PK material, she dipped them in coffee to get a little bit less white because there's the original cuff. And it wouldn't look good to have, but I've still got the originals there so that the value hasn't changed any. But don't they look just great on there? And then these are satin diamonds. And the back has satin diamonds. She danced with Fred Astaire in Easter Parade. And the number that they danced to was when that midnight choo-choo leaves for Alabama. And Fred Astaire had been retired for, oh, about two years. And Gene Kelly was supposed to be in Easter Parade with Judy. But he broke his ankle playing something in the backyard, base, baseball or something. And he couldn't be in it, so they got Fred Astaire to come out of retirement. And Judy and Fred had never worked together before, and they really had a great, great time. So Fred Astaire had a whole new career. If you see anything about Easter Parade, you always see her in this costume. Even if it's off the set with Irving Berlin, who wrote the music, he's, she's gonna have this costume on, talking to Irving Berlin, and Fred Astaire usually is in the picture, too. This was the real steal. I could listen to that guy talk all yeah. day long. You, if you're at the Hastings Library and you see Terry, yeah. feel free to ask him anything because he oh knows gosh. it all by heart. That man is He's amazing. fascinating, yeah. And you can see this display, as you said, at the Hastings Public Library now through February 29th during their normal business hours. All right, come